This video is brought to you in part by True Tech Tools, quality tools, essential support. What is going on, guys? We have us a dinner rack. So, this is one of the beauties that I first started with back in the day. You know, I love to complain about them. We've done a video on this one where the battery took a dump. Looks like that happened last year at this time. Yep, 1027 of last year. So, I get here, and she thought she may have done something wrong, but we had an LED light for overcrank, which means it didn't start. And we're gonna find out whether we got a bad battery or what. So we've got our meter here ready to go. We put it in manual. Hear the click. So we're hearing a contactor click, which is this device right there. But it's not starting. So we may we've already replaced the starter once, and I'm wondering, did we lose that again or do we have a bad battery? So let's get this turd opened up and see what kind of poop we have inside. We've got the battery terminals exposed, got the covers off. And we're looking at our voltage right now. The infamous battery charger that overcharges the battery is at 14.11. So we have charge going into the battery. Now, the question is, when we hit the button to make it go into start mode, is that voltage going to drop down to nothing, which means it's purely giving you voltage from the battery charger and no real capacity from the battery? Let's find out. Ready? Here we go. All right, so the battery is holding, but we aren't getting anything done. Now I'm gonna go grab my amp meter that can do DC amperage, and let's see what kind of amperage we're pulling on that starter. We've got our amp meter on there. We are locked into DC voltage. You can see that we've got a charge rate of about 0.7 amps, or at least that's what the draw is on the battery right now. My fluke meters in my other bag, and I took it out of my truck. This one works just fine, so let's kick it on. Ooh, five amps. That don't sound good, does it? So, this starter here has already taken a crap, and, hmm, <laughs> don't smell so good, does it? Um, look at that. Look at that paint right there. Is that because of heat build up, possibly? I don't know. Let's see what our voltage is at the contactor. So we've got the starter coming down, uh, what lead coming from there up to the contactor. Here's where 12 volts should be at all the time. And when it closes, this should be 12 volts here. Let's see if we got 12 volts on that side of it. So carefully doing this with one hand, going to ground and going to that nut. We got 14.1 there, going to that same nut into that spot right there. Let's see what happens when we hit the juicy go button. Okay, we have 13 volts there. All right, so we have 12 or 13 volts going to the starter, but nothing's happening. We're not pulling any real power. So we're only pulling five amps. So inside there is brushes. I guarantee you either the brushes are not making good contact to the rotor or the windings are completely burned up and they're just there ain't much happening so as much as i don't want to let's go ahead and yank this thing apart and see what's going on internally and see if we make it run or if we're gonna have to order another starter because this one i was part of one of those kits we bought where we stock all the parts and then obviously it's been sitting there forever and uh, just going to waste and now that these aren't no longer made this particular model and i don't think it fits any of the current ones it's basically worthless stock on the truck just waiting for something to go wrong. And now that we've had it that long, it's out of warranty, most likely. So yeah, you guys yeah, spend thousands of dollars to keep a guy certified. And if you aren't doing these every day, I don't think it's worth it. So let's go ahead and get that motor yanked out of there, starter motor. We're gonna disconnect the battery. And then we gotta yank. I think this would be probably a good idea to yank, maybe. And then we'll yank this to um, X-headed bolts there. Look, I got a baby one. That's not a, not a pair of channel locks. All right, so we're just gonna unhook our negative here. That way we don't blow anything up. Like I said, this battery's fairly new. I really don't like the amp probe meters, if you're wondering. This is a hell of a meter for a lot, and gives you a lot for your money, but it turns on the light and runs down the battery. I don't really like it though. ACDC 52 nav. 
It's a good meter, very accurate, but the battery life sucks. I think that was the thing I hated the worst about it. And it was a little fluky, even though Fluky owns it. So we're gonna go ahead and take off our springy dings here. Put them up there so we don't lose them. Undo this one here. Usually I use wire uh, needle noses. Get that, leave that one there. And it's metric. So we're gonna get our metric wrench out here. There we go. Yes, I know. It's a joke. Oh, lost the bolt. That's it. Gotta sell my new one. All right, what do we got? It's down here. Come on. Come on. I think short this wire off, doing it? <clears throat> All right, found it. There we go. Now we can get to the top of that. We'll yank that thing out of there. It, uh, well, I can tell you right now what it is. Now that I can see, I think that shaft deal there is not retracting. Or am I just crazy? Maybe not. I thought that thing. Yeah, you can smell something. Got a cobalt set here with a ball and socket. It makes it a little easier to get in there. Get this thing out here in a jiffy. And see if we can find out uh, what exactly burned up on this. You got them loosened up and you got to watch it because there's some plates there underneath that will go flying. And I noticed when I did it, the, I forget what it's called. Anyhow, it was engaged like that and stuck. As soon as I pulled it out, it retracted. Let that other one fall, might as well. Now this is why you definitely want to have your battery unhooked. As you can see, my back end of my starter is touching things that would short out. I'm pretty sure I did exactly the way they had it before. Because if not, that could cause that issue, which, you know, nine eight ten eight so two months two months and uh in a week a little rusty i don't know if we can make that turn much yeah it turns with a finger so we're not stuck there so when this goes one direction it kicks out goes the other it comes back so we might be all right what we're gonna do Let's unscrew this thing from the end here and take a peek at the end of it and see if we can pull it out of there and see what's going on. So we've got our meter here on ohmage and we're gonna go from here, which is there, and go to ground on the starter and we are at 0.3 ohms. So we do have something, you know, making internally. I might fit, yeah, works out nice. It's not really 5 16th, probably 8 millimeter or something like that, but let's go ahead and pop this apart. We're out much nothing right now. Yeah, that's got stinky smell to it. That's not good. I don't think it's just a rust inhibitor of some sort. Yeah. Pretty crispy on the ends there. You can kind of see that paint. I don't think that's how the paint was. It might have been, but it sure looks like heat marks on paint. Let's see if we can get this thing apart. Yeah, it'll come apart fairly easy apart some somehow, kind of. I think. I don't remember. Honestly, it's just trash it and say enough's enough. Time for another. Oh yeah, she's toast. Toast. Toasty critter. You can see down in there, those windings are crispy. She is crispy. Yep, let's go ahead and just take this apart and get it outside of the unit. No sense wasting any more time with it. I need to order a new one. 
for whatever reason, you know, it's warm this weekend. And now it feels colder and you know what? Let's see if we can that magnet on the end is so crazy. Oh my, yep. Look at that. Them are sweet chocolate chip cookies there. See that? Melted that puppy right down. Molded that right there into place. Come on, focus, you piece of junk. All right, there we go. Melted that right down. Melted it all the way. So, four pole rotor, or four pole, yeah, four pole brush system. And then inside here, you can see the magnet. This, this thing is, this thing's bad. There we go. Um, see this right here? That right there is the plastic from the rotor. Look at that right there. See that wire? It's broke. I wonder if that was the start of the problem right there. One of the wires broke and then it couldn't complete the path. Yeah, look how bad it is up in here. Completely crisped it up. Fantastic. Probably didn't do this contactor a whole lot of good, but anyhow that's unfortunate they make their own supposedly did not write their place of manufacture well guys i don't know how long it's going to take to get back here so i may just go ahead and end the video here but as you can see basic trial elimination we just went through with the meters didn't have to have the amp meter it just was kind of giving me some insight of what's going on just your basic dc meter and making sure that you've got power going to the starter if it don't kick over, then see if it's seized up, then give it a sniff, use the old sniffer, and uh, see if she's a toasty critter. Other than that, I think that's about it, guys. So just reverse the motor, the start motor there, starter, and uh, put her back to operation. We'll give her a little checkeroo on that, which looks like we're good. No uh, problems with the oil, probably hasn't ran. I mean, Chances are, but this thing's probably ran maybe an hour or two at the most. But because they didn't put an hour meter on back then, they uh, you never did have a clue how much time you actually got out of it. All right, so we're back. Got the uh, new starter here and get her installed. Looks pretty much the same as the other one did that I can tell. It's like the same everything so making sure we got the right thing here it says the 410 motor it says one spacer is all you really need this is identical to the ones i just installed so i'm not going to bother opening them up so i did everything the way it was supposed to be done it's just faulty this one here comes out when you do it clockwise from shaft end Feels right. Looks like typical Chinese writing on it. I should say font. Font is what I'm talking about writing. Got her ready to go. See if I can get it in there without losing her position. She goes right down there. But first, let's go ahead and get our starter wire on here. Get that tightened up. I don't have my mounting bracket here with me, so. It's tight. Got her there. Got to put the shim back on because it fell off. But we'll get her back in there. So we got it started there. Battery's still disconnected. Otherwise, it might get a short. And snugging her up. Got our idle spring here. Bracket we got to get back in. We'll have to recheck the frequency while while it's running just like before got that tightened up pretty sure this is where they went if not we'll know when we gotta run it usually can see a spot there where it's been kind of etched in from the vibration there you go yeah have to see where it is. That seems fairly tight. 
hook up our battery here. Okay. Tighten that up. We already gave it a quick test by accident. Just actually put it in auto mode to see if my uh, exercise timer had been lost. It hasn't because it's been powered by the power from the house, the battery charger inside. Uh, I did unhook the battery just in case. Didn't want any possible shorts, things like that. And the battery should be fine because uh, it wasn't being drawled on. Uh, if you ever have a time where you don't have a battery charger running, you do not want to power the generator uh, with power in standby because it will just kill the battery. So we've got these all hooked up. I'm pretty sure that's about where they were at. We're going to go ahead and check it and see what we got. Let's go ahead and see if it engages. It disengages. You can see right there. It comes out and in. So it seems like that's working. Okay, good. Make sure the fuel's on. Looks like it is. She's on propane. Let's see where the propane tank level is at. One of these kind of tanks is not going to last super long. <sighs> Looks like it's right there at about 80. Fuel is on. There we go. Just double checked my oil. Good on that. Let's go ahead and see if we can make a run. I think I got them backwards. Maybe not. I need to look at my chart. Gosh, it's been forever. Now I did just check my position of my sensor here. I went ahead and made sure it was obviously all the way to her clockwise. She is at that position and retightened it. Everything is correct. We'll go ahead and get the primary spring set up at 61.5. Then we'll hook up the secondary spring. We got our probes hooked up there. Meter's ready to go. Let's go ahead and see where we're at here. Oh, so we're a little high. Lower that down a little bit. 61.5. Get averaging here. These junk hinges here. Min, max, average. Already not acting dumb as it was. That plate must have been moved. Back a little bit too. Okay, that really upset me when that freaking thing falls down like that. I actually put a new case on this thing because I wanted it to look like new again. Let's do it again here. Lady's not home, so we'll go ahead and put it in auto mode. Let's go ahead and pull our low voltage wires here. This is your battery charge circuit. It's also your transfer circuit. So when we undo this, it's going to start up. And then once I plug it back together, it's going to transfer because the power then has been transferred to power wires for sensing. So you have like 250 volts, 240 volts on one. The other two are your DC, which powers your transfer switch. So when we undo it, it's going to trigger, make it run like that. Gonna start up. Should be blinking. Good start. Okay. Put her under the load. We'll plug it together. It's gonna run a minimum of a minute. There we go. Should have transferred. It's not pulling much. Probably some clocks or something running. So 0.7. Not a lot, but it's it's running something. 
All right, so I just started cycling a few more times and the dang thing did not want to let go. It's stuck. So I kicked it on and it literally, yeah, wants to short it out. So that's probably what's going on. That flywheel is jacked up and it's holding on to that plastic tooth. So we're gonna have to take this thing apart. We gotta take the battery back off again. Get the battery off. Let's see if we can get this thing undone. So obviously the shims either need more or less. I'm not sure. You look in there and you can kind of see. You can't see it, but the gearing and stuff looks like there's actually more gap in there than what we need. Okay, we've got it out. You can see the teeth just look like they're not getting as far down as they need, which makes me think it's the shim is too high. And I thought that I seen these without a shim. So we're gonna go ahead and take that one out of there and see how it reacts. Once we get that out of there, you should see it retract. Like I said, it does retract fine. We caught it, you know, before it caused any damage. It's smooth, it's fine. Nothing's been damaged yet. Ugh. Right there, look at it, it's hanging up on something. You see that hung up there once? Yeah. Jeez, freaking junk. Now we got freaking junk. What do you do? We've got it back in there. Let's see how it runs. I'm not gonna worry about frequency until I see this thing start several times. You can kind of see it right there. more times here and see what it's doing I think it's disengaging right away you know I mean tolerances might have changed over the years I don't know it's not that much of a difference I mean, it's not super super crazy thick but I don't know not the smoothest thing we've already checked these bellows and all that and air filters went through that on the other video that I did uh, wasn't that long ago it was like six seven months ago Still hanging in there at 61.5 with just one spring. It's running better as it gets warmer. 62.5, no amperage on the amp meter, which means it transferred back. Let me try that one more time because it did not want to shut down. Sometimes when these lose their power, they have a tendency to get their brain scrabbled. I uh, had a few viewers show me or tell me that, so we'll uh, put her back into auto and we'll try it again and see how she does. Got her unplugged. It is, actually. So there's our frequency. See if it drops down a little bit when it transfers over, which it won't transfer until we switch it back. And there goes that high dollar lid again. 10 seconds is passed, it should transfer it over. Okay, it did transfer over, we got seven tenths of an amp there. Frequency's holding right in there at 62, and it's dropping a little bit, which is great. Voltage, 245, not too bad. As the load increases, it'll slow down the motor, and it'll be right at 60 hertz. That's the theory behind it. It's not a very big motor, so. Oh, well, it must have transferred back. It already dropped out, so good. We had seven tenths, now we have none, so good. Now it should shut off, hopefully. All right, it did just shut down, so it is working as it should right now. I'm more satisfied with it than what I was earlier, so other than the cover and stuff rusting away, which looks awesome. Wow, oh wow, look at that. Completely through the cover, nice. That's why they went to aluminum body. Yeah, I wouldn't put no more money in this thing at all. All right, well, it's working. Let's see if we'll start one more time. It's engaged like it should. Now the starter's hot or warm, so you know it could be completely different once it's cold. 
but I can't sit here and wait for it to cool back down. I've got things to do, so we'll just hope it works and we'll go from there. I'll put a date on it and call it a day. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. That's the second part of it. So if you did, hit the thumbs button. Till next time, guys. We'll catch you on the next one. Later.